Most people in an organization are involved with an information system of some kind. For an organization to create and effectively use a system requires thought and effort. Fortunately, there is a six-step process for accomplishing this. This process is called System Analysis and Design. In organizations, this six-phase systems life cycle is used by computer professionals, known as, system analyst. These people study an organization's systems to determine what actions to take, and how to use computer technology to assist them. The first phase of the system life cycle is called preliminary investigation. This phase determines the need for a new information system. There are three main tasks in this phase, which are problem identification, suggesting alternative system, and preparing a short report. Defining a problem means, examining whatever current information system is in use. Determining what information is needed, by whom, and why, is accomplished by interviewing and making observations. So what do we do next? We suggest an alternative system. This step is simply to suggest some possible plans as alternatives to the present arrangement. Next, prepare a short report. This is to document and communicate the finding of the whole phase. The second phase is called System Analysis. In this phase, data is collected about the present system and then analyzed to determine the new requirements. Analyzing the data can be done using tools such as top-down analysis method, decision table, system flowcharts, data flow diagram, and automated design tools. This phase attempts to give birth to a new efficient system that satisfies the current needs of the user. This process continues until a preferred and acceptable solution emerges. Then, at the end of this phase, a report is made for documentation based on the user requirements and the detailed analysis of the existing system the new system must be designed this phase is called system design which is the most crucial phase in the developments of a system in this phase designing an alternative system is according to three types of feasibility first is economic feasibility which focuses on cons versus benefit and time for the system to pay for itself second is technical feasibility which focuses on reliability of hardware software and available training the last one is operational feasibility which focuses on suitability of the system within the organization the next part in this phase is to select the best system a few questions are needed to be considered in making the right choice will the new system fit into an overall information system Will the system be flexible enough to be modified as needed in the future? Will it be secure against unauthorized use? Will the system's benefits exceed at cons? Then, after selecting the best system, a system design report is prepared to summarize the findings. We've come to the fourth phase of the system cycle called, System Development. In the development phase, we need to acquire the software and hardware. Acquiring software can be done in several ways, for such. Purchasing off-the-shelf packaged or designing custom programs. Then, before actually implementing the new system into operation, a test run of the system is done to remove any errors. This step can take several months for a complex system. After having the user acceptance of the new system developed, the fifth phase which is system implementation begins. This phase is also known as conversion. This phase involves converting from the old system to the new one. This is one of the most critical and expensive activities in the system development life cycle. There are four types of conversion approaches which are direct approach, parallel approach, pilot approach and phased approach. Direct approach is abandoning the old system and starting up the new system. It can be very risky and not recommended. Parallel approach is running the old and new side by side until the new system proves its worth. It is very low risk. 
however, it is very expensive and not generally recommended. Pilot approach is converting only one part of the organization to the new system, until the new system proves its worth. It is less expensive but riskier than parallel conversion. It is recommended for situations with many people performing similar operations. Phase approach is gradually implementing the new system to the entire organization which is less risky but more expensive than parallel conversion. It is recommended for situations with many people performing different operations. The next step in this phase is training people to use the new system. It is important as it show them how to operate the system. The last phase of the system cycle is system maintenance. Maintenance is necessary to eliminate errors in the system during its working life and to tune the system to any variations in its working environments. This phase includes system audit, which is comparing the new system to its original design specification. Next is periodic evaluation, which refers to the period evaluation of the new system as to ensure it is operating efficiently. All the phases are now complete. By then, a new system is now ready. If a major change to a system is needed, a new project may have to be set up to carry out the change. The new project will then proceed through all the above life cycle phases. Due to time pressures, it is not always feasible to follow every phase of the system life cycle. Two alternatives that require less time are prototyping and rapid application development. Prototyping means to build a model or prototype that can be modified before the actual system is installed. Typically, the development time for prototyping is shorter. However, it can be more difficult to manage the project and control costs. Rapid Application Development RAD, uses powerful development software, small specialized teams, and highly trained personnel. Typically, the development costs more. However, the time is much less and quality is often better.